From KPU News in Austin, you're watching Texas This Week with Ashley Goodo. Good morning. What a week it was at the Texas Capitol. Bills died, the tax swap proposal was killed, and a hotly contested bill made it through the Senate. Let's get to the three things you need to know in Texas politics. The week kicked off with a bang. On Monday, the Senate voted on its version of House Bill 3, the school finance reform bill. Up until Monday, the Senate version of the bill was contingent on lawmakers passing the tax swap that the governor, lieutenant governor, and speaker of the House vowed to pass the week before. But during the debate, the Senate approved a new funding source, a fund with money from other taxing revenues. This was pretty much a sign that the tax swap wasn't going to pass in the Senate. So when the tax swap came up in the House for a vote, some representatives had some choice words for some senators. And then the bill was delayed until next session. The House of Representatives had a long night Thursday. Midnight was the deadline to initially pass House bills and resolutions. The day was filled with long breaks, stalling tactics, and at times, a few rowdy moments. All I'm asking for is for Pharaoh Farmer to let our people go. Dozens of bills were killed or postponed, but hey, that's just the way the game is played. Better luck next session. Compared to last session, lawmakers have pretty much gotten along and focused on meat and potato issues this year. But that doesn't mean there aren't some divisive bills, and we saw one in the Senate this week. A bill to make it harder for the state, cities, county schools, and universities to take down historic monuments or memorials. The author of the bill said he saw what was happening at UT with the removal of Confederate statues and wants to preserve history. Under his bill, it will take a supermajority vote of the Texas legislature or governing body to remove statues 25 years old or older, and it establishes a fund to put up counter monuments. Democrats put up a valiant fight against the bill on the floor, trying to explain why these monuments are problematic, especially for people of color. They also said the decision to remove such things should lie with the people who live in these communities, not the state. But in the end, it came down to a party line vote. That bill is now in the hands of the House. The 2020 primary election in Texas is 10 months away. That seems like a long time from now, but candidates know it will be here before you know it. And just this week, another Democrat threw his hat in the ring of presidential candidates. All of this is keeping the statistical analysis at 538 very busy. They were in Austin this week to record their podcast, so we sat down with Nate Silver and Claire Malone to talk politics. <laughs> So you guys are in Austin promoting your podcast. Tell our viewers a little bit about it. So it's the 538 Politics Podcast. Um, we work for 538, which is an ABC News affiliated company, we should say. Um, but we cover elections, politics, as well as stuff like sports from a very numbers and data driven view. At the same time, um, it's early in the Democratic primary, very early in the general election phase. And so numbers alone, don't tell you everything. So the podcasts are where you kind of hear us um, flesh out our thoughts between the reporting that we do, the polls that we look at, the analysis that we do, and you kind of see us thinking in real time. And we think that transparency is really important, um, that reporters should explain to you if I have a conclusion about something, which at this stage is probably fairly tentative and preliminary. We want you to like know where that comes from and who we are as as people and where our strengths are and where our blind spots are. So I think the podcast hopefully um, communicates that to people. You know, I think sometimes people start to question polls because they see numbers coming out differently. Um, you'll have a poll come out and then the very next day something else will come out yeah. with different yeah. numbers. So how do you guys, you know, work through that? that? I mean, so one basic thing is you want to wait to take an average of polls. If you do just look at one poll at a time, it'll drive you a little bit crazy. Um, and look at stuff like how many people are surveyed in the poll. A lot of primary polls, it's hard to actually reach Democratic primary voters. Um, so you might only have 300 people, 400 people in a poll. Those numbers will bounce around quite a bit. And also, you sometimes get a different picture if you look at polls of Iowa or New Hampshire. Um, the national polls here in Texas, Beto O'Rourke, polls a lot better than he does in national polls. And so you need to like look at who conducts the poll, 
how many people were surveyed, how recent the poll was, and what state it's from. But I think what we try to do in the podcast particularly is talk about polls in a way that's accessible, I think, because I think a lot of people see polls and stats and politics and they can kind of, their eyes can glaze yeah. over. And we try to walk through we try to walk people through what certain polls are good or bad for. Um, we try to be pretty accessible about it. I'm not someone who comes from the same kind of statsy background that Nate does, so I often see myself as like trying to figure out what the polls are telling us just as I'm talking to Nate on the podcast. So I think that we, we do try to give it sort of bite-sized chunks when we break it down every week on Mondays. When Texas This Week continues, Nate and Claire weigh in on the Democratic primary.